So many of the carbohydrates come down to a simple formula. It could be root uh, CnH2NON. Or if you factor water out of that, carbon atoms and an equal number water molecules. And this was an early observation about carbohydrates and this led to the name carbohydrate because they appeared to be hydrates of carbon. So that's where the name carbohydrate comes from. We now know that they are not actually hydrates of carbon, but the name has stuck. Um, this formula is not true for all carbohydrates, just for many of them. Um, so what is a carbohydrate? Well, it's a polyhydroxyaldehyde or a polyhydroxyketone or a compound that produces such upon hydrolysis. So here we have a couple of examples. Glucose and fructose are both carbohydrates. Um, here, glucose is an aldehyde and fructose is a ketone. So this one's a ketone, that's an aldeh aldehyde. What does polyhydroxy mean? Polyhydroxy means many hydroxyl groups. So we see that pretty much all these carbons have hydroxy groups on them, and that's very characteristic of carbohydrates. Um, we can classify carbohydrates in several different ways. Um, Monosaccharides contain a single unit of polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. So mono meaning one, one unit, one saccharide. These cannot be broken down into simpler substances by hydrolysis. They will not react with water and come apart into simpler substances. They generally contain three to five carbons. The five and six carbon ones are more common. We're going to talk a lot more about those. And um, monosaccharides are water-soluble, and they are generally white crystalline solids. So here again, looking at glucose and fructose, these are considered monosaccharides. Then we have the disaccharides, di meaning two. So a disaccharide contains two monosaccharide units, and these are covalently bonded to each other. These are also water-soluble crystalline solids. Examples of these are table sugar, um, which has the chemical name sucrose, and milk sugar, which is lactose. When you hydrolyze a disaccharide, you get two monosaccharides. And this little diagram here is sort of an overview. Here's a monosaccharide, and we're representing like glucose or fructose as just a little circle here. A disaccharide would be two of those hooked together. So you could have two fructose molecules hooked together, or two glucoses, or one glucose and one fructose, all kinds of different combinations. And then we're going to talk in just a minute about oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. And these um, differ just in terms of how many monosaccharides are present. So an oligosaccharide is kind of in the middle. It's 3 to 10 monosaccharide units, again, covalently bonded to each other. It's not real common to find free oligosaccharides in nature. They're usually associated with proteins or lipids in complex molecules. So they're not usually just running around by themselves. Um, if you do complete hydrolysis of an oligosaccharide, you'll end up with several monosaccharides, three to ten of them, in fact. Polysaccharides are polymeric carbohydrates. And these have many carbohydrate, uh, monosaccharide units. So oligosaccharides were three to ten um, polysaccharides are going to be more than that. Um, it's not uncommon for them to be in the hundreds to over a million monosaccharide units. And again, if you completely hydrolyze them, you'll get monosaccharides. Examples are cellulose. Um, cellulose is found in paper and cotton and wood. So the hard structure of a tree is due to polysaccharides. Um, what we refer to as starch in your diet, um, these are all starchy foods, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, corn, beans, peas, all these different things. Starches are polysaccharides also, and we'll learn more about those. And the difference is 
how the um, monosaccharides are hooked together.